drinking water quality is a human rights issue. And it's one of the most basic human rights issues because aside from air to breathe, water to drink is the next most important thing. Worldwide access to good quality fresh water for drinking is probably one of the major human rights issues. That occurs in the United States, that occurs on all continents, particularly in arid and semi-arid areas. Like Kansas has particular problems with fresh water because it's a semi-arid area. And the same is true of central Siberia. So in those areas where rainfall is normally not adequate for agriculture, like in western Kansas to begin with, it's a particularly severe issue. I think all USAID programs offer some unique opportunities for educational institutions, but I think there's something uh, extraordinary about what has happened with the Haskell Indian Nations University, Gorno Altai, Kansas State University, and University of Kansas partnership. And that is that we've put indigenous people of one part of the world together with indigenous people in another part of the world. I think the importance of having this exchange between indigenous peoples is critical, particularly in this era of globalization. In 2002, Costco Indian Nations University, Graduation Power! I want to uh, thank the Pow Wow Committee for allowing uh, me to recognize some very special guests we have joining us tonight here at Haskell Indian Nations University. They have literally come from the other side of the world. You can't get any further away than they've traveled. Twelve hours difference. So tonight, when you see these students and faculty members walking around, Give them a good warm handshake. They've come a long ways to be with us here. The opportunity to have indigenous peoples from two parts of the world come together and find out, you know what? We share some very fundamental insights about the nature of the world and about man's place within unique ecosystems and environments in the world. When we traveled to Siberia last year, we happened to be there when they were having a great festival. And it's interesting because at that time, they brought in all of the native Altai people to sing and dance and They've commented how much this feels like home, being here, because what they've heard is good music, they've had good food, seen beautiful dancing, and that's exactly what we experienced over there last year. I think that as a native person, I have even developed a, a heightened appreciation uh, for how much we can learn when we begin to make those comparisons with people in other places. Uh, we not only find the similarities, but we find distinct differences. Differences that are, are particular and unique to people living in particular environments. We've tried to do two things with this exchange. We've tried to enhance the capacity of the scientists at the universities. Uh, for example, by taking very good scientists at Gordon Altai State and providing them with the state-of-the-art equipment. We allow them to do excellent science to understand what the water quality issues are. И все вам выдает, сразу выдает концентрацию, сразу выдает вам э, эту площадь этого пика.
After the Soviet Union was collapsed, uh, the equipment in the local universities are still very old. It's probably 20 years old, simply because the economic situation is not allowing them to buy uh, new equipment. Theoretically, students and, of course, the scientists uh, were great. They knew how to use uh, equipment we use here, a uh, spectrophotometer and atomic absorption spectrophotometer. And it was very interesting to compare the water samples from Altai Republic and local in Kansas. Our project was one that allowed us to transfer some very basic technology, water testing technologies, to rural villages, to communities that still, uh, their water sources um, come out of the rivers, out of the streams, out of springs that are untreated. There, there, are, there are no, you know, in many of these communities, water processing plants. So they depend on this water. And yet, often they're not sure, you know, what the quality of the water is. So we've also been using these very simple chem kits that allow the, the school children or teachers or parents to go out to their drinking water source, which in Siberia um, is the river or the creek that they're living near, and test the water for things like fecal coliform, uh, use pH tests, do a, a lot of tests that would let them know about what the quality of the water is for their health. Uh, we found out probably what we were thinking about. The uh, water samples from a mountain river was extremely clean, much more clear than Kansas water sources. But the samples from a city uh, of Gordon Altaisk, the water was not as clear as it should be. And by teaching them how to do that and giving them that technology, which is actually a, a pretty good level of technology for understanding health issues, by giving them the technology to control themselves, we empower them to use the science for their own decision making. One of the faculty members, the provost of the Gordon Altai State University, he is a local representative in Altai and he was present while we were doing the testing. So he said he will take this results and show it to the local representative in Altai, and some action should be taken, especially in a city. We can then use the science from the faculty at Gordon Altai State with this very expensive high-tech equipment to simply double check or to look for things like lead and other pollutants that might not be easy for people to test. But that's not enough because people don't always believe or understand what a scientist tells them. But by letting people do their own tests and compare it to the scientists, that builds trust. That allows them to start to understand how the information was obtained and that allows them to participate in the decision making. And that allows them to trust the scientists even when they don't understand all the details of the scientific tests that are being done. We've at least taken a very small step in democratizing technology. We've created, we've, we've given a, a very simple technology that we can train students, high school students, junior high students to use to take to their villages and to test water, to at, at least get some reading on the quality of the water that they're drinking, maybe identify problems. If every school will have at least one kid, it will be good for a whole year to do a school project. And out of the school, if two kids will start to be interested in an environment, just think about this, two times hungry, there's 200. And then can go home and talk with their friends, it's another 200. And they will talk with their parents, we're talking about thousands of people from 100 kids. It's, it's a great, great impact should be in the entire Republic. I think that in and of itself is, is incredibly important. From a cultural standpoint, I think our project has, has been an incredible success because, again, we connect the kinds of cultures we have to the places we live. And this beautiful wetlands ecosystem that I'm, I'm standing in the middle of is such a great example of that, of, of the uh, in this area, the Osages, the Khansar, the Ka people, 
their use of places like this and the plants, the animals, uh, the knowledge they had of these ecosystems was incredible and in many respects continues down to this day. Native people have knowledge to contribute to modern science. I think in terms of looking at systems models, larger ecological models that focus on life processes in the planet. Native culture, ceremonies, customs, beliefs, and habits cannot be understood unless you put those in the context. You put those in the context of the ecosystems, the landscapes, the natural environments where our native cultures emerged from. We open the door for each other. This is a people's people to people diplomacy. It's involved science. The students are learning. The information is going to the parents. They share between the communities. I think it's just a great opportunity for both countries to get together and to solve as many environmental problems. And not only environmental, we're just learning from each other. I would personally hope that USAID would look at ways to involve other tribal colleges in the United States in these kinds of exchanges where we can put indigenous people of North America together with indigenous people in other places in the world so we can mutually benefit from this interaction, from this cultural exchange and we can share some of the technologies that we have, some of the knowledge, but we can also be enriched by seeing again what it means to be native to a place on this planet. I thank USAID for giving the students and the faculty at Haskell Indian Nations University uh, our colleagues and our sister institutions and those uh, Altai, citizens of the Altai Republic and, and faculty at Gorno Altaisk and students at Gorno Altai, uh, Gorno Altaisk University giving us the opportunity to come together to begin an exchange which is, which is indeed going to be ongoing uh, because I think what we're about is some very important work not for individual careers but because from an indigenous perspective, we're talking about the quality of life on the planet. Oh, <laughs> 